Hi, this is Peter Sterling. G'day, it's a big man here, Daryl Broman. Hi, this is Brett Kenny. G'day, it's Eric Grass Senior here. Yeah, g'day guys, Aaron Rapey here. This is Ben Smith. Hi, Bernie Gurr here. Hi there, this is Mark Hughes. How you going, mate? It's uh, Mark Kiki here. Uh... Hey guys, uh, Nathan Kaler's here. I'm just... Brian Senior here, uh, NRL physio. Hi, it's Shannon Cooney, a uh, long-term Parramatta Eels tragic fan. Hello, this is Paul Dunn. Hey, it's Hayden Knowles here. I'm... Hi, this is Michael Butner. G'day, Peter Wynn here. Hi, my name is Ron Greep. Um, I'm from the United States of America, and um, currently you're listening to the Paracave Podcast. Broadcasting live from the Paracave. Hello and welcome to another bumper episode of the Paracave Podcast. My name is Troy Warner, and I'll be your host this week and every week. And this week it is episode 128. And let's start off by saying, first of all, welcome to any new listeners that have discovered the podcast and how to listen. I hope you really enjoyed your listening. Uh, I encourage you not only to subscribe to the podcast, but also listen to the podcast, but check and check out the back catalogue with interviews with some real legends of rugby league and also some great rugby league fans as well. Uh, And let me know what you're thinking by leaving a rating and review on the podcast platform that you listen to. Now, to this week's podcast, and it's with a guest who has been on the show before, and in fact, he was my first ever guest on the podcast back in 2020. And that is Mr. Hayden Knowles, highly regarded high-performance sports trainer in rugby league who has helped with teams win a couple of competitions at the Roosters and the Panthers as well. He started off at the Parramatta Eels and was only a few weeks ago a trainer for the Indigenous All-Stars team and is a current high-performance trainer for the New South Wales Blues in State of Origin. But... He also has a great podcast called Get the Edge with Hayden Knowles in which Hayden interviews inspirational people and asks questions not only for rugby league fans but questions that are relatable in all facets of life like leadership questions and he has asked the likes of Ivan Cleary, Anthony Seabold and Wayne Bennett. Uh, So after this podcast... Check that one out as well and have a listen. But to today's chat with Hayden, and it's a 2023 NRL season preview podcast. And yes, I know that the NRL has seen round one already come and go, but it's very early days. And Hayden gives us some valuable insights and thoughts into the top teams from last year. Those some of those teams from outside the eight last year, and also the new Dolphins franchise as well. It's a really interesting chat from someone who is in and amongst the game of rugby league, and as I said before, has worked with some of those top teams, and he has a lot of connections in rugby league. So it's a really interesting chat about the 2023 NRL season. So that short that story shortly, but. Uh, before we get to Hayden in the 2023 season preview, did anyone happen to watch the podcast on the YouTube channel last week at all? You can please subscribe to the podcast on YouTube as I'll be dabbling on putting some content on there from time to time in from the interviews in both short clips and also the full episode, usually broken up into two parts so it's not as long. Uh, and just a few shout outs as well. Uh, thank you to BTZD Clothing for coming on board as a clothing sponsor of the podcast. BTZD specialise in customised team wear, sports clothing and apparel. So stay tuned for info on that one. But in the meantime, if you are interested in any team sports wear, simply head to www.btzd.com.au for more details and see what they do and what they can do for you. So thank you BTZD for coming on board with the podcast. It's most appreciated. Stay tuned to the socials as well for some new exciting Paracave podcast hats that you'll be able to purchase for a reasonable price. 
that will come with a new exciting podcast logo as well. That's right, a new exciting podcast logo. I can't wait to share that one with you, uh, but that will be coming out soon, so stay tuned for details. So a big year coming up on the podcast. Thank you to you, the listeners, for the support and listening each week. I hope you really enjoy the content that comes out each week uh, because that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you guys, the fans. But of course, it wouldn't be at all possible without the help of the spon- of the other sponsors as well. Uh, major sponsor, Jack's Pale Ale, which is exclusively available at Paramount Leagues Club in the club shop. Uh, and also throughout the Leagues Club as well. It is my game day beer of choice, home home game beer of choice, uh, visiting the Leagues Club before a home game, and no doubt having a Jack's Pale Ale. And also a shout-out to co-sponsors, Bo Cook from Loan Market, your local Penrith Mortgage expert. Contact Bo on 0401 213 Two three six, and get in contact today for a free chat and see what Bo and his team can do for you. And also let him know that you heard it here on the Paracave podcast. Also, Brightside Detailing and Ceramics. Scott is the owner of Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, and he has he is a certified detailer with over twenty years' experience in the industry. He does car detailing, paint correction, ceramic coating, and also headlight restoration as well. You can contact Scott on Instagram at brightside underscore detailing underscore ceramics or 0449 And again, let him know that you heard it here on the Paracave podcast. Thank you to all the sponsors. With your support, it helps the podcast grow and reach more people as well, which is much, much appreciated. But enough of me talking. I'm sure you want to get into the season 2023, NRL season 2023 preview with Hayden. So as Hindy says... Get a beer, coffee, whatever you want. Sit back, relax and enjoy and let's get straight into it. And today on the podcast, something very special. We've got former guest on the show and host of the Get the Edge podcast. And listeners, if you haven't heard the Get the Edge podcast, make sure after this one you check it out because there's some great content on there, um, some great guests. But uh, Hayden Knowles, thank you very much for joining me on the Paracay podcast for a season 2023 preview. Yeah, thanks, Troy, um, and thanks for that little plug there for the podcast. Some of the recent guests, rugby league guests, that is, that I know your listeners will love, but it doesn't matter what team you support, but listening to Ivan Cleary or listening to Anthony Seabold or, you know, um, those type of coaches that are willing to give their time to just share lessons to people, um, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. So, yeah, thanks for that plug, but you wanted to preview the season, did you? Yeah, so I thought I'd get you on and uh, we'll talk about a few of the teams uh, in the competition and see if anybody can knock Penrith off uh, the top of the perch, the premiership uh, winners of the back-to-back the last couple of years. Um, So, well, let's start off with Penrith. Um, Can they go three in a row, do you think, this season? Well, it is funny listening to a true paramount like yourself hoping that someone knocks them off. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, it, it's hard to go past the way. If you knew what Ivan Cleary values, uh, the culture he's got that's driven by everyone out there, um, guys like James Fisher-Harris, the way the standards he leaves, he leads at training is uh, is on another level. Nathan Cleary, the preparation, the detail, Isaiah Yo. I mean, there's so many leaders out there. They, every one of them are a leader. Moses Leota, Jerome Lua, they all, they all, when I say leaders, they all lead each other. They all build each other up. So they're always going to be hard to beat, aren't they, Troy? It's hard yeah. to, 
I mean, I'm sure people are going to say certain positions that they will miss, but they will always be hard to beat. So uh, let's see how that pans out, hey? Yeah, definitely. Well, just in that podcast chat you had with Ivan, uh, you talked about communication and how important that is in a side because the team with the best communication usually has the best defence and the best defence wins games and wins premierships. Um, yeah, so just talk us about through that one. Well, yeah, uh, I'm glad you listened in detail, by the way, Troy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a keen listener every week. Yeah, good. Well, yeah, the, the most connected team wins, Troy. The most connected team defends the best and the best defensive team win. And, and it's, it's obvious over the last few years, Penrith have been the best defensive team. And, and as you see, they're a very connected team. The actual bit about communication, it, it relates a lot in rugby league, but it relates a lot in, in every form of life, really. Um, to defend well, you have to be a team that communicates well. So, yeah, that was a good little um, good little section of that podcast. And like I said, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you listened. They are, like I say, mate, Penrith here. Everyone will want to see him knocked off, in particular all your listeners. Um, but they will be hard to beat. But yeah. Now, uh, late last season, it was, uh, I think, Parramatta and Melbourne at Combank Stadium. Uh, it was a battle for the top four position. And after the game, I saw yourself and uh, Ivan Cleary, Panthers coach, out, outside of the ground there. Uh, what were you guys doing there? Was Ivan getting a bit of... <laughs> Uh, what are you, intelligence on the on the eels or or end the storm as well because they would have played whoever won that game. You have a great memory and you don't miss a thing, mate. Yes, I, well, I actually went to uh, to dinner at an old cafe on Church Street, old restaurant I used to go to many years ago uh, when I worked at the eels. Was I think it was called Restaurant Three One Seven on Church Street, and. Ivan and I went for dinner, and then all of a sudden, people recognised him. Obviously, yep. not me, and <laughs> and so it was no secret we were in, we we're in Parramatta. And then we walked. It was a great walk to the stadium. I remember fans were coming up. Ivan, what are you doing here? And then we sat up in a box, and yeah, we were we were obviously. Um, I wasn't working for Panthers at the time. I was just there as his mate, just yep. joining him, studying. Studying uh, the game and talking the game because, yeah, he was either going to play Parramatta or the Storm the following week, and it ended up being Parramatta. And, uh, yeah, because sometimes you get a little bit more uh, uh, different angles when you study live, like different um, opportunities to see different things than you do just sitting in front of a computer screen studying vision. Yeah. So... So that was a great opportunity to, to do that. And, uh, yeah, you didn't miss a thing. I know you <laughs> caught us after the game. And um, I remember you, you ended up having a selfie with Ivan and, and you were like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun, mate. That was that was good. But that's what sort of makes uh, great coaches even greater, isn't it? Like um, turning up to games, watching them, watching their opposition as you said, play live and you get that different feel. Well, yeah, I mean, coach, the amount of study coaches do and their assistants do and their staffs do is is uh, hard to explain to listeners. But, uh, yeah, them watching live as well is just another way to invest time in being prepared. And Ivan's always very prepared. And, and for me, it was actually it was great memories going out there and that walk from Church Street and walking up around where the back to top field used to be. Um, bumping into people like you. There's a lot of para fans <laughs> were into me going, when are you coming back? When are you coming to para? And then someone else, what are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun night. That was, um, that was a good night. And what a stadium, by the way. We haven't even talked about that. That is the best stadium to watch a game from. Oh, absolutely. Best yeah. rectangular field in Australia, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So good. We'll, we'll see well you there. Well spotted there, Troy. Well spotted. Uh, no worries. We'll, we'll, we'll see you there in round four when the Panthers take on the Eels. <laughs> Mate, I'll come every week. and I've got I've got uh, life membership tickets at the Eels. I'll come and watch the Eels every week with you. 
Oh, beautiful. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, mate. You know, then again, you might as well, we might as well just move this straight on to the Eels. Is, um, yeah, mate, well, they, they, were, have... they were grand finalists last year and they've, they've lost a few players, but they've also recruited a few players as well. Uh, how do you think they'll fare? Well, I tell you what they need to do, and I there's one player in particular I spoke to recently in an Origin uh, get together, and um, and I'm so pleased I got a message from him to say he's he's gone and sat through the grand final, and he's um, he's fronted up to learning from it, and it's very painful, mate. And and yeah. my advice to him at the time was you. You need to go and front up. I've, I mean, I haven't actually been out there and played like he has, but I've been a part of teams where I couldn't watch a grand final loss. I couldn't learn from it. I just brushed it aside. And um, the best thing that ever happened was the loss at Penrith when I was there against the Storm and actually, like, fronting up to the pain and learning and studying it and... and Talking about it, I remember talking about it with a senior player um, throughout an off-season that made me how I approached their training and mindset the following year. But fronting up to the lessons was so important in that. Um, there are other games in particular, there's games that I worked with at the Eels where we lost grand finals and I know I've never watched those games again and neither have all the players that were a part of it. So... Only through lessons over a long period of time have I realised the best thing you can do is front up to it and, and learn from it. And if Parramatta do that, mate, they, they have great leaders out there. Like, you think about Mitchell Moses, Gutho, um, Junior Paulo, like, think about that. But also, like, the standards that are being lifted from players 17 to 30, that's a big part of a preseason that... If if they raise their standards, that raises the standard of the first team. And, you know, I know they've got Nathan Kalis out there now looking after that crop that and he is so committed to developing those guys that if if he's got that commitment and they've got that commitment, then the first team's only gonna raise to another level. I know they've got Trent Barrett out there now coaching the attack. Like I've I've worked with Trent Barrett before. He's a yeah. he's a brilliant attack coach. He's gonna add so much to some of those guys. So I know you say they've lost players, but they've added in a lot of areas. They've added in experience and learnings, and they've added in staff, and they've made it. There's no reason why they can't repeat what Penrith did by learning their lessons of 2020s. Um, so, yeah, mate, there's positive signs for, for your Eels, that's for sure. And one player that you no doubt would have had a, a little bit to do with at your time at Penrith was Jermaine Hopgood. Now, there's a lot of raps uh, on him. What can you tell us about Jermaine? Mate, I love him. His work ethic is the type of person that, like I say, he'll raise the training standards for everybody else. So, sure, they've lost some people, but they've added in other areas. Like, if I think of that, Penrith of um, 2020, 2021, that, that period there where they lost some players, but they brought in guys like Zane Tedovano to raise training standards, you know? Yep. Uh, you know, like Jermaine Hopgood is, yeah, he will raise, he will lift other people. I just had a week with him in the Indigenous camp, and that was like a, um, that game was like a unlimited interchange, just players yep. going on and off whenever they felt like it. You know, it was almost like, at a park touch footy game, you just put your hand up and come off. But, yeah. mate, I, I was on the sideline and I, I said to one of the players, "I think we need to, um, I think we need to get Jermaine Hopgood off." And this senior player said, "Don't get him off. He's a gun." Okay. So Jermaine Hopgood played like seventy five minutes uh, of an All Stars game, like his first game of the year. He played seventy five minutes and and. Um, Senior players, when you have senior experienced players that say that about a young kid, you know that Para have got something special, mate. Yeah, no, we're, as fans, we're all excited to see him uh, wear that blue and gold and uh, see what he can bring to the team for sure. Um, the Roosters, they've been sort of touted as premiership favourites in these early days. Uh, they've recruited Brandon Smith and... Um, Jake Turpin as well, as well, I think. Uh, how do you see them going? Can can they get back to the top of the tree? 
Mate, how can you go past Trent Robinson and what their their standards in their club, driven from the very top, Nick Pilatus down, right through to people like Kath King in the front office? There, it's very hard to go past them. I, I caught up with Trent Robinson in in England, um, you know, around about November, and I know he was busy doing some work with the French team, but then he was going to take some time to freshen up and. I know he would have freshened up and I know how determined he is when he got back there and just you could hear it in his voice that, you know, there's this belief that they're playing to win. They're not they're not playing to make up numbers. They play to win premierships. He's got a really good staff. And, yeah, mate, it, it's hard to go past them as well. Um, you're picking all the gun teams here. Who else you got there? <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, you know who goes under the radar? Who I rate massive is Cronulla. Okay, yeah, we saw right. them last year play some really great footy last year, um, finishing second behind the Panthers. Um, can they back that up this year? Well, yeah, that's what I mean. They go they go under the radar. And, and again, I, I love Craig Fitzgibbon. I know what he values. I know what he's about. I, I just, you know, he's got some good staff there. He's even got Scotty Campbell, the conditioning coach, strength and conditioning coach that I've had work with me at different clubs and, Mate, Scotty's been a part of four premiership winning clubs, different teams, so he goes under the radar. Um, but there'd be stuff that Nico Hines, Dale Finuc and Cam McGuinness, those guys have brought to the club over the last year or two that I'm, I am positive their training ethics so it would have gone to a new level just because I know I've seen them in action. I know what they're like. And, but, you know, like you know, people seem to forget too about guys like Matt Moylan, he is a bloody good player, mate. Like he, if 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 they do everything right and he's got his head and body right, you've got you know Nico Hines, Matt Moylan, you've got some guns there. Like you know, even experienced head like uh, Wade Graham, yeah. or, he he would have loved what those players have brought to his club as far as training and mate, they go under the radar. But like you say, they were second last year, and I think they can only get better. Uh, there's a lot that has to go right in a season, but there's a lot that happens in pre-seasons, mate, that whoever wins this year, there's something has already happened in this pre-season. Even before we've recorded today, there's a reason why a team's going to win and there's a reason why teams are going to finish at the bottom. Like, There's a lot of different reasons that could be, but it's actually already happened. Okay. In this yeah. pre-season, pre-seasons are the time where there's a, there'll be a special little story out of it somewhere. I mean, I mean, look at South. We haven't even mentioned South, but I, I just had a week in the Indigenous camp with Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker and yep. a couple of others, but um, even Latrell's brother Shaq. Um, but just have a look at them and what the pain that'll drive them for the last five years. Um, that pain is pretty powerful, but. People like Latrell who have gone to a new level. I saw him in Indigenous camp in the same way I've seen Nathan Cleary before, the last person on the field practising. Okay. Um, I, I actually said to Latrell, I actually grabbed him when I saw it. I said, if you do this for South all year, South could win the comp. And he looked at me. I said, no, no, I'm serious, mate. Like yeah. You have that effect on others. He's such a leader now, Latrell, that. South could go to another level. Cody Walker, after a training session in the Indigenous camp, he, he grabbed a group of guys and started running extra laps. Like, he started ru okay. running extras. And same story, hey, Cody, if you're driving those standards at South, South could go to a new level. Yeah. And then they've got guys like, you know, Cameron Murray, Damien Cook. They've got great staff. They've got... Johnny Morris kind of goes under the radar out there. You know, like people forget, like, the experience, the coaching experience of him. And, yeah, like, South, South could be the team as well. Uh, and, 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 honestly, if Luttrell really, really wants to do it like he does, and he, he's a proven winner and competitor, um, but the way he's now preparing and such a leader, uh, mate, they, South could be the team, mate. Yeah, definitely. Well, as you said, they've had uh, the five or six years 
of pain there, making the prelim finals, the the loss to the Panthers in the grand final. Uh, so that obviously that's got to urge them on. Uh, and and you talked about stories there. The Melbourne Storm, they always have a story or two that comes out of their side. They've lost a significant amount, especially in their forward pack. And Ryan Pappenhausen seems to be still on the injury list, unfortunately. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts about Melbourne? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, mate, because you can never go past the Bellamy effect, can you? But no, uh, they always seem to get it together, and that that's from a that's from a culture set by great leaders like you know Cam Smith, Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk, those guys way back. If if those players continue to drive those standards, I'm sure they'll be there or thereabouts. I probably agree that. Um, the fans would be thinking, oh, you know, they've lost some players. They've, they've, um, you know, they've lost Brandon Smith, for example. But remember, they got Harry Grant. You know, yeah. um, you know. Remember, they got Cam Munster. Like they're going to be there. They'll be there or thereabouts. Um, you never put it past the Bellamy coach team. But then, yeah, the uh, Ryan Pappenhausen thing. I, I really feel for him. He's such a good fellow. Such a good team person such a good pro like i really really feel for him but you know what making a sacrifice and making a commitment to go overseas and just totally totally focus on that that injury and the way they're being patient with him i'm sure that'll pay him back because you know they're going going to be there at the back end of the year so being patient with him is probably very wise bellamy always has good staff around him so it's hard to go past him. And the other one that goes under the radar is the Cowboys. I mean, That's right. That was the, like, the next team I was going to talk about, actually. Well, we think alike, mate. But cow- Cowboys are, uh, yep. you know, they did some great things last year, um, what Todd Payton did, and then it's only going to grow further. And once again, like, I only tell you this because of a bit of insight I know on a couple of the guys like Reese Robinson and Chad Townsend who I've had in some camps. Their their attitude and their commitment to build, helping that team get to another level is it's hard to go past it. So like I said, out of all the teams, like something's happened already in this preseason. I mean, there's other things that will happen, but yep. there's, there's, there's players have done things in this preseason and coaches have done things that, It'll be the difference whether they're there on the big day or not. It's all, it's, it's actually already happened. So I'm so interested to see, um, you know, like big improvers as well. Like yeah. So of the bottom, time. bottom eight teams, uh, from last year, uh, we see Tommy Turbo. He, he's hopefully going to return to the Manly team in round one, um, after doing that, uh, injury prevention and rehab over in America. How much of a bonus do you think to Manly having Tommy T back? Oh, I mean, that part's obvious. It's the same in Origin. When when we have him in Origin, he's he's not only such a good player, but such a good person to have around, as is his brother. His brother's the nicest man in rugby league. um, But you know what? Like, Manly, you're so right, mate. Anthony Seabold, I... Make sure you listen. I dropped a podcast with Anthony Anthony Seabold only this morning. Yeah. Um, he was a great chat. He he's done, and I've been out there and watched him train this preseason. He he's done some great things, mate. And I know where his mind is set on on the areas he's focused on in his preseason. That's not up for me to give away. Um, yeah. But uh, he's done some some great things, and there's going to be a, a great improvement. I feel in that manly team. Leaders, again, leaders like Jake Trevojevic, Daly Cherry Evans, I mean, I think it was documented how they even went and spent some time with some AFL clubs themselves. Like, like yeah, they, they've been doing some really good things this preseason. And like I said, there's stuff that's already happened in this preseason that'll be the difference. So Manly have made the effort. They've got some new staff there. Um, uh, Jim Dimmick's out there. I love Jim Dimmick, former Para Eel, so I'm sure you'd love him. Yeah, definitely. Um, Shane Flanagan, who learnt a lot from his time with the Para Eels in his early days. So I'm sure you'd love that to know that, that he's out there. Yeah, yep. uh, you know, um they got some they got some um 
great staff that stayed there, but also they've brought in some new staff. So, yeah, man, Manly could be a big improver. And, and, and to be honest, like my biggest improver that I feel, and I guess I'm a bit biased for having spent a lot of time with Cam Serraldo, is the yep. Bulldogs. Um, again, I, I visited there this preseason and the vibe you get, the feeling you get from players and staff out of that place, how how connected Ciro will get them. I know what he values. He's got a really good staff, mate. He's recruited some players. I'm sure they're thinking long term, but you'd have to think there's going to be improvement, right? Like, yeah, definitely. What do you think with them? Because I know the Eels hate the Bulldogs, but <laughs> yeah, you know? our rivals from the '80s, no doubt. But uh, and to this day as well. But uh, and especially recently, we've. Reed Barney going over to the Bulldogs now, so a little bit of extra, a little bit of spite there, I guess. But no, oh yes, uh, sure. no. Look, the Bulldogs, as you said, they've recruited well. Uh, there's some pretty positive comments from players and and people within the club about Cameron Serraldo. Um, look, I think they'll improve on their 12th position from last year. Uh, whether they make the eight or not this year, um, I, I don't know, but definitely. In the next couple of years, I think they might uh, break into that top eight. Yeah, I mean, if people, I mean, probably Parramatta listeners of yours won't go and watch any of their content, but <laughs> the Bulldogs released some pretty cool content, and and I, I just know, I just know the environment Ciro creates. He'll create an environment where players love going to work and staff love going to work, and that's half the battle. Uh, what he values and, and the type of people he's brought in as well, on his physical staff, on even his coaching staff, but even bringing guys like Andrew Ryan back and Mark O'Mealy back, like you can just feel it. You can feel what he values, what he respects, and and over time that'll really improve that club. Um, yeah, sorry to Power Eels fans. <laughs> no, that, that's that. all right. That's all right. <laughs> There's so many positives to the Eels, by the way. So do, you, many. do you think that's a uh, a good thing to get the right uh, ex player into a club that knows the knows a club? Well, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's also important to have people that aren't that have learnt from other clubs and other places. For example, Cameron himself, he wasn't yep. a Bulldog man. So, um, but I think it's very important to respect past players but also choose correctly who you think could inspire your current players and and I tell you now from knowing him personally and also you can listen to a podcast I did with Andrew Ryan he is one of those people he is I mean he's made to go back to that club I know he's worked with different clubs since he retired but that club is for Andrew Ryan he yes I mean even though he's an ex eel as well um Learned a lot of stuff from his time at the Eels. But, uh, yeah, he's made for that club. And one last team that was out of the eight uh, last year was the Brisbane Broncos. They were in the top eight for a, a while there throughout the year, but sort of fell away towards the end of 2022. Do you think they could cr- possibly crack it for a top eight spot? Well... You know what? Kurt Capewell was one of the best recruits that kind of went under the radar during all the success at the Panthers. What Kurt Capewell brought to the Panthers was was very powerful, mate. Yeah. If he, if he takes that there, that'll be big. Um, it's hard to go past Adam Reynolds also in that space. Um, and then, like, some of the talent they have. Gee, sorry about the dog noise <laughs> in the background, mate. Um, some of the talent they have in that that space like uh, an Adam Reynolds and Kurt Capel, but but then think about Payne Haas. Like he, Payne Haas is possibly the best athlete I've seen, like okay. physically. Well, wow, yeah. Mate, I'm talking fast, strong, fit. Yeah. Powerful, mate. He is. If he, but again, if he, if if he's done everything right, if he's if everything's he's got it all um, in order, he will have a great year. I'm not sure how his preseason's been. Like I keep repeating, like some of the stuff has already been done, but mate, he he's I mean, Selwyn Cobo, oh my 
God, I just had a week with him and what a what a great yeah. and a great athlete. Once again, if he gets it together, he can be such a contributor to that team. So, yeah, I'm not sure because I, I don't really – I haven't really been following what the Broncos have been up to. Have you? Oh, little bits here and there, but uh, they've got Martin to power up there now as well, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. which will probably – He'll probably play a role off the bench, uh, good experience. Um, but, yeah, as I said, they, they were sort of in the eight last year and then dropped out towards the end of the, end of the year, which was a shame because it would have been good to see them in there. Um, two more teams, the West Tigers, last year's Wooden Spooners. They've got a new-look West Tigers um, sort of outfit there. They've got a few new players there. Um, obviously headed up by Tim Sheens, the head coach, and Benji Marshall and Robbie Farrow, the assistants. Uh, they've got Api Corusel, Isaiah Papali'i, uh, David Clemmer, um, uh, Charlie Staines as well as part of their new recruits. Will they lift off the bottom of the ladder? I hadn't given that too much thought, but when you mention all those names... Um... I mean, like I said uh, before about like Kurt Capewell going to Brisbane. What a he was one of our biggest recruits at Penrith. So, and I mentioned before the intensity of Zane Tedavano. I mean, if you think about that crew at Penrith, the three biggest buys were Zane Tedavano for training intensity, Uppy Curacao for what he bought for the creativity and attack, and a lot of other things Uppy brings in his energy, and then and then the other one was Kurt Capewell. So. They were three massive, massive buys for Penrith. And now think about he's gone to the Tigers, what he'll bring to them in such a crucial position. So um, up here, and then you mentioned Charlie Staines. Well, he's one of my favourites. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Love him. I used to try I used to try to, I used to say he's the next James Tedesco, believe it or not, oh, okay. when I had him as a young kid. Like, he, mate, he's a freak. Um, and no one's – you haven't seen the best of him yet. Thank you. I'm sure like yeah. the Tigers. Um, David Clemmer, wow, the experience he brings and when he decides to be a team first player like he, he, he has later in his career, he will um, – I mean, he always was, to be fair, like a wall. Um, but, yeah, when, he, when he's actually at that age now when he realises I can help these younger guys because he has – Mate, he has that aura about him, and he has that experience about him. But and when he when he decides to um, go to a club and put that as a priority, which I've heard he has, mate, he'll have a big influence. How can he not with that That's experience? It. And I uh, forgot John Bateman as well from England. John Bateman, oh, like um, yeah, who knows? But and and I, I actually really like. I I love older coaches, mate. I love the wisdom older coaches will be bringing and contributing to young coaches like Benji and Robbie. Like, it's hard to go past that, mate. Like, yeah. I, I still think one of the best old coaches out there that's not even coaching in the game at the moment that has so much to offer is Brian Smith. Yeah. And, and there's people like Brian and Tim Sheens who have coached that many games. You can't buy that experience. So, so what Tim would be bringing to... Um, to those younger coaches, like, yeah, I, I didn't give much thought to the Tigers, mate, but when you just mentioned all those names, they're, they're uh, yeah, there's positive signs for them as well. Yeah, no, um, you mentioned Brian Smith there, hoping to get him on the podcast for a chat. No doubt the fans would love that one. But speaking of a, another old, oh, I should say older coach, I won't say old coach, uh, but someone that you've worked with in the past as well at World Cups uh, is Wayne Bennett, and he's heading the new Dolphins franchise in 2023, the 17th team. Whereabouts do you see them finishing uh, in 2023, and how do you think they'll go? Oh, now you know <laughs> I love Wayne Bennett. I, I, I know that, yeah, yeah. I love him. He's had a... Um, big influence on my career and he's still the most listened to episode on my podcast. Okay, wow, yeah. Um, but, but I do think it's going, going to take time and I'm sure he understands that. But, oh, yeah. Uh, like I kept saying 
how important pre-seasons are. Uh, he didn't even have half his team before Christmas because, you know, a lot of them were still off doing World Cup and different things. So that, like, oh, geez, I, I, I hate ever tipping against Wayne because <laughs> how can you go past what I'm sure he's building and the belief he'll bring? Um, but personally, I think I'm not sure he's had enough time this pre to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think about the players? Do you think about the mid mid bottom eight sort of place? Yeah, and but then again, knowing Wayne and his uh, the history he's given to this game, <laughs> who knows? He, if there's probably some fairy tale story that they end up in the eight just because of his genius, but but if I'm thinking with my brain now and not just my love of Wayne. <laughs> Yeah. I'm saying they're they're not in the eight because it's just going to take time. That's all. Um, but I know he'll be setting standards up there that will live on in years to come. So, yeah, that'll be. I mean, that's going to be a great story either way. That oh, one. definitely. Yeah. Well, are you ready to have some fun? Are you ready to commit yourself to some maybe some grand finalists, some premiers, some wooden spooners, Dallium winner, <laughs> <laughs> mate? Can I tell you, because I've always worked in clubs where I always listen to this stuff and it gets used as motivation. Okay. So I do not, I will not be telling you a wooden spooner. Okay. Yeah, because, fair enough. Because that was the one that used to always wind me up the most. I mean, you think about it, mate. Penrith of 2019 into 2020, they had, we had a bad year 2019 and no one tipped us to pretty much win every game that year um, besides the grand final, which hurt. Um, but no one tipped them to be grand final. So you can imagine all the commentary we listened to in that pre-season. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so then again, I don't know if players are going to sit back getting wound up what I say about them. Um, but I'm not going to give you a wooden spooner. Yeah. Um, what were the other questions? Uh, uh, grand grand finalists. Who, who do you think might make the grand final? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, see, now you are putting pressure on. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, do you know what I said before about Latrell Mitchell? Yep. If he does what I mentioned before, and he's the last one off the training field every day, he's my Clive Churchill medal winner. There you go. Okay. There you go. So there's one team in the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's so many. You, you don't have to win the premiership to win a Clive Churchill. There's so many good friends at different clubs. I don't. Yeah. I, I find this air, part of your podcast very hard, mate. <laughs> All right. What about a, a Dally M winner? Who? Or, or okay, not a Dally M winner. What about a a surprise packet player? Um, that you think might break out in 2023? Oh, a surprise packet player to break out. Ah, you need to give me more thought on that. I've I've been doing a few club visits with um, with Freddie recently, and uh, yeah. there are you do see some young kids, and you go, wow, he's going to be a freak. Um, but yeah, I don't. A surprise packet to really break out. Um, can we go back to that? Yeah, yeah. Can we do that on the next episode? Okay. You've really yeah. rattled me here. Yeah, um, no, that's all right. Dally Dally Ant. Dally Ant. Dally Ant. Who do you think? Let me ask you, who do you think? Oh, to be honest, I haven't thought about it either, to be honest. But um, we saw Nico Hines win it last year. Um, it's obviously going to be the the top line players of each team but it's hard for a top line player in the top teams to win it because there's so many good players in those teams so they might take points off each other um yeah i mean at some stage in his career mate nathan cleary will yeah. win down at some stage he he has to um just the just through how much he puts into his game like it's it, it, I think that trophy will take care of itself in his lifetime, whether that's this year or not. I mean, it could be Mitchell Moses. Like, 
There you go. I thought I'd give you one for the para. The para uh, um, orders. Mitchell Moses. Let's go with Mitchell Moses. Okay. Yeah. No. He, he's uh, he had a great season last year, um, and as you said, that grand final hurt obviously is going to spur not only him but the team on to bigger and better things, and hopefully that's the case. And uh, I think he had the most try assists last year, Mitchell. So hopefully he can do that again and. Uh, yeah, be happy with that. And Parramatta yeah. and South in the grand final, then, eh? Well, there you go. <laughs> there you Paramount. go. We'll finish on that one, eh? Okay, Parramatta <laughs> Premiers as well. There we go. Well, Hayden Knowles, thank you very much for joining me on the Paracay podcast today. And listeners, don't forget, get on to the uh, Get the Edge podcast as well. There's some cracking, not only rugby league chats, but sports people and influential people on there. And it's really. A really interesting podcast. I love listening to it each week and each and every week on the way to work uh, when it comes out. So, uh, Hayden, keep up the great work there, and uh, we'll, we'll try and get uh, Ivan Cleary on the podcast. Mate, you, you honestly, he uh, he'll be fantastic for your podcast. You mentioned Brian Smith as well. Yeah, great man, and and like you say, would have a lot of interest from Parramatta people back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah, there'll be some great, great opportunities for you there. Keep up your work too, mate. I enjoy your podcast. Uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to chat again throughout the season. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, you, mate. Bye. Well, welcome back, and thanks for listening to Hayden and myself chat about the new NRL season. Some really great insights there to most of the teams and how we think they will go in season 2023. Let's look back at the at the end of the season. Let's look back and see how good our, our selections or our thoughts will go, and see who. Uh, takes out the competition but uh yeah we'll see how our um conversation went and whether the teams did as good as what we thought they did but uh thank you hayden for your time and your chat You're very busy man and no doubt we'll chat again soon during the season as well and listeners once again once you've listened to this podcast please help support Hayden as well uh, have a listen to the Get the Edge podcast with Hayden Knowles it's available in the same places that you'll find this one Apple, Spotify etc once again a quick shout out and thanks to Jack's Pale Ale a fantastic major sponsor of the podcast don't forget Jack's Pale Ale is available for purchase in the club shop it's perfect for that Eels fan or beer lover just Drop into the club shop today and also keep an eye out on the socials for what's happening at Parramatta Leagues Club each and every week. And Bo Cook from Loan Market, once again his contact number is 0401 213 236. Get in contact with him for a free chat and see how he, he and his team can help you get on top of your home loan and find you that best deal. Also Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, which is also on Instagram and Facebook. Contact him today on 0449-544-086 and get in contact with him and you'll be driving around in the shiniest and cleanest car in town, no doubt, and let him know that you heard it from myself on the Paracave podcast. Please support these businesses that support the podcast each and every week that help bring you quality entertainment and share the love on socials as well. I'd love to see some pictures of those shiny cars um, as well. So drop some pictures on socials, tag Brightside Ceramics and Detailing and also uh, the Paracave podcast as well. But thank you to you, the listeners as well, for listening uh, to the podcast each and every week, uh, and especially to last week's podcast with Ron Greep over there in America. That was certainly a very interesting chat. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Gives you guys a little bit of an insight into a Parramatta Eels fan, a rugby league fan living in the US, and what he thinks of the game of rugby league, uh, the greatest game of all. 
So thank you for listening to Ron and his story last week. Uh, And if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, please subscribe to the podcast. So as soon as it drops, you'll be able to listen to it. I really appreciate the support. Thank you once again to the official media partner of the podcast at Parramatta Times. For all your local Parramatta news, simply head to www.parramattatimes.com.au. Have a great week as best you can. NRL season 2023 is underway. I hope you're enjoying your footy so far. Round one done and dusted. On to round two now. But make sure you follow the podcast on the socials for some interesting content and to see who is coming up both on Instagram and Facebook as well. Some great and interesting guests coming your way over the next few weeks. But to sign off the show, and as I always say, the Paracave podcast, by the fan, for the fans. Go, para!